we have here a 2012 Volkswagen Jetta with a 2.5 liter and the customers brought this to us because they've been to the dealer and the dealer failed their Missouri safety inspection for the horn and the wiper blades I don't know if they've taken care of the wiper blades but they're really only concerned with the horn working plus the dealer tried to sell them a million dollars worth of add-on sales including vacuum pump god I don't I don't have the list with me but it's a ton of stuff and that's funny to me because another customer just called me and they had an estimate from the dealer for four thousand dollars worth of almost the exact same list of stuff so anyway we're only concerned with the horn here and we have uh, some uh, auto scan I haven't looked at this yet map sensor map barrel sensor in the engine check DCC's in the engine control module is in the transmission in the ABS module you have another check trouble codes in there for the engine central electric module no. Control circuit for horn, there we go. Open circuit intermittent. <clears throat> I've never run into that code before. Uh, most of the horn problems I run into are bad clock springs or the horn themselves is bad. Hopefully this won't be a lame video with just a bad horn. <clears throat> There's some other trouble codes in there but none relate to our uh, horn problem. I'm gonna reach in and see if I can halt this thing. I have to say when I first got in the vehicle I bumped it one time and it went honk and since then it hasn't honked at all <clears throat> we'll probably have to rack this thing up the simplest check would probably be to just access the horn see if it's getting voltage these horns do fail quite frequently so maybe it'll be simple We are going to try to scan the central electric module and see if it has any bi-directional controls that can turn on the horn. Okay, one thing I don't know that I mentioned before is down here at the bottom where it says go here, you can uh, shortcut this and go to 09 and that takes you right to the central electric module. That's what these first uh, lumbers are. There's ducks flying by. That's what these first numbers are. Here, that's, that's the address, and you can go directly to it to save yourself some time. tests horn select an output and press start it says running but yet I don't hear anything I would assume this would honk and then release and then honk and then release it's possible the, the horn just isn't working it's possible that I'm not doing this uh, output test right I guess I can uh, try. Ooh, refused by control module. Strange. Let's try one more time here. We're going to do sequential. That usually gives you a better in indication that it's working because other things will work. Indicator lamp for emergency flash. And down here at the bottom, I'm going to cl click activate. see anything 
happening inside. And I hit next, windshield wiper motor. I have the hood open, so I'm not going to uh, probably see any reaction there unless I close the hood. Go ahead and close it. And activate. Okay, so that seems to be working. Stage two. Next, heated rear window. Let's see how I don't think I can see that that's working. Indicator lamp for heated rear glass. Activate. And that is lit up in there. It's on the button. Next. Output terminal, I'm gonna skip that one. Activation for interior lights, I'm gonna skip that one. Pre-run fuel pump, I'm gonna skip that one. Enabling heated seat. Hopefully we can get to the horn soon. Right turn signals, activate. And that is flashing. Left turn signals, activate. And that is flashing. This is also how you learn how to diagnose a car because you, now we know that if we have a left turn signal problem, we can use these features to diagnose it. I'm just going to skip all that. Hopefully we can get to horn soon. Bulbs for brake lamps. Lock solenoid. Starter relay inhibit. Backup lamps. Probably edit all this out here for time's sake some lockings going on there. Control circuit for unlocking rear lid. Tank flat motor. The fuel door just opened. Control circuit for window regulator. Oh, come on. What I'm going to do is end up passing it up. Lots. Okay. Horn. <clears throat> says inactive unfortunately I'm not sure I can trust this because the code is present in there uh, earlier when I did this I believe it said that it was active and then when I hit next is when it said no response from computer or something like some message like that of course, the horn's the very last one. <clears throat> okay, so not 100% sure that helped us much, but we will uh, rack this car up and check voltage at the horn. We can actually jump voltage to the horn. Um, <clears throat> With regards to the diagnostic process, I have to mention once again that doing these videos has helped me learn that there's more of a diagnostic process than I ever thought in almost every circumstance I duplicate the issue, check for trouble codes, check data stream, check for bi-directional controls, and then do voltage tests. And almost any electrical problem will follow that same scenario. And this one's no different, although our bi-directional controls didn't give us much help. But we'll go inside and uh, try and get the car on the rack where we can access the horns. Portland's getting ready to crash this WRX into the door frame here. There's one of the fans over there. I assume this car has two fans like most of them. The oil leak is definitely coming from up top near the vacuum pump. Sometimes this housing here leaks on the 2.5 liter. Okay, but back to the fan. Obviously this ain't nightmarishly hard to get to, but it's a little bit tight. I got big hands. So we'll uh, get in there, unplug that connector, or maybe I'll just reach in there and back probe it. And we'll see if it gets 12 volts when we push the horn button, and we'll jump 12 volts to it to see if it honks. A little bit hard to see up in there, <clears throat> but we've put a T-pin in the back of the connector. 
And I'm going to touch that connector. Cortland's up in the car. Cortland, go ahead and push the horn button. Yeah, keep cycling it on and off. Okay, so chances are good that this is a bad horn assembly. We need to check the ground to, to be sure. And certainly wouldn't hurt to jump 12 volts to the horn also to see if it honks. Here's another thing we can try here. Hang on. Hang on, Cortland. This is called beating on it. Okay, push the button a few times. Are you pushing it? Yeah, that was it. Okay, it honked exactly one time after beating on it. Try again. Keep trying. I am. <clears throat> okay, so beating on it gets one reaction out of it, so that's pretty conclusive that that's a bad horn assembly. We're gonna go ahead and check the ground off camera, and um, but this thing needs a horn. Neil's here from the Auto Glass Stop putting a windshield in this Jetta. Say hi, Neil. Hi. I got busy and I didn't take any video of the horn being replaced, nor of the car after it was fixed. All I would have had to do is take a quick video, honk the horn a few times. But it would also would have been nice to show the bi-directional controls actually making the, the horn honk. The reason I was doing the bi-directional controls on that is if the clock spring was bad, the bi-directional controls would have still turned on the horn. So that would have kind of gave us direction but it's real easy to do voltage checks on that. Um, I want to go ahead and post this video even though I didn't have like a solid conclusion. And uh, also, uh, Neil from the Auto Glass Stop does a real good job for us when he comes by and I wanted to mention his business in, uh, in the video. So if you're in the Belton area and you need a windshield, you uh, call the Auto Glass Stop. But, um, or if you have a Volkswagen, bring it by our shop and we'll have Neil do it for you. If you learned anything from this video, click like and subscribe. And if you want to financially contribute to the continued production of these videos, visit my website down here at www.kansascitytdi.com.